Align yourself with people that can encourage you, people that can empower you, people that you can learn from, people that you can grow from. That's very important. See, if you have people around you that can contribute to your growth. When I wanted to become a speaker, I joined the National Speakers Association. I wanted to be around the Dr. Norman Vincent Peels, the Zig Ziglers, the Dwayne Dyers. I wanted to be around people that were doing what I wanted to do. I wanted to learn from them. And you want to do that too. You want to align yourself with people who think like you. People who dream like you. People who want more out of life. People that are stretching and searching and seeking some higher ground in life. As opposed to the majority of people, somebody said, always strive to get on top in life because it's the bottom that's overcrowded. And so you don't want to be on the bottom. It doesn't take any effort to be a loser. Birds of a feather flock together. You run around with losers, you will end up a loser. Unconsciously, unconsciously, you will pick up their ways, you'll pick up their habits, you'll pick up, most importantly, their attitude about life. If you're around cynical, negative people all the time, you will become cynical and negative. So you've got to watch yourself. Many of us are living out the lives of other people, living out their conclusions, living out of their consciousness. Doesn't take any motivation, any drive in order to stay down there on a low level. But it calls on everything in you, ladies and gentlemen. You have to harness your will to say, I'm going to challenge myself. Sometimes I have to pull myself out of bed and say, come on, Les. Things I know I should do, I don't do. Things I shouldn't do, I do. I found that the biggest enemy you have to deal with is yourself. There's an old African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. You begin to look toward making this your decade as you begin to look toward making your life different as you begin to look at yourself you've got to redefine yourself who are you right now and who must you become in order to create what you want what has to change about you what is it that you're doing right now that would be a liability for you as you begin to look toward the future and take inventory of yourself what is it about you right now that you've got to leave this behind because this no longer fits Looking at where you want to go and the kind of person that you must become, the kind of standards that you have for you, what is it that you must do differently? It makes sense. Unless you change your pattern, unless you change the way you're thinking, unless you change your behavior, you're going to continue to produce the results in your life. See, all of us are winners, but some of us are producing results that we don't want. And so all you have to do is look at your game plan, look at your strategy. How is it that you have been being? What is it that you've been doing to produce this? So you're the director, you're the producer, you're writing the script, you're the star of your life. And as you begin to look at your life, you can decide whether or not it's a smash or whether or not it's a flop. That's in your hands. Look at your life, look at where you want to go. Don't worry about your circumstances. Don't worry about your age. I have a friend who's up in age, over 70, and she wanted to build a multi-million dollar complex. Her name is Dr. Johnny Coleman. Lenders and bankers say, you can't do that, you're too old. She ignored them. That building now stands, ladies and gentlemen, a multi-million dollar structure. But there are a lot of people who would have listened to that. There are a lot of people that would not have even gotten to that point. They would have talked themselves out of even going down to the bank to ask for it. Because they've already said no to themselves. See, it's time now. If you want to make this your decade, you've got to start saying yes to your life. You've got to start saying yes to your dreams, yes to your unfolding future, yes to your potential, as opposed to saying no. See, 87% of our self-talk is negative. So you've got to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to say yes to your dreams. Why not? Why not me? Don't spend time like most people going through life complaining. You've got to learn to let the past go so you can grow. Many people never act on their dreams because they allow their past experiences to determine what their possibilities are. Whatever you've done in the past, that's not a reflection of your possibilities. That's just a reflection of your consciousness. That's just a reflection of your development and your growth. The future is unfolding for you right now. The future is unlimited for you right now. No one knows where you can go. No one knows what you're, po what you're capable of or what's possible for you. You don't even know that. I, I had no idea, ladies and gentlemen. No one could have convinced me that I was able to do this. i never forget I was speaking in Detroit, and a high school friend of mine saw me afterwards, and he was backstage. He said, I can't believe it's the same person. And I thought for a moment, and I said, it's not. The person you know, he's gone.
We have the power to change our personal history, changing the direction of our lives, changing our thoughts, changing where we want to go, exploring new horizons. So as you begin to look at this decade and affirming that this is your decade, as you set goals that will make you stretch, that will bring out the best in you, as you begin to remove the negative, toxic people from your life, as you decide to take some chances in life, and that's one of the things that's very important. This God said, if you're not willing to risk, you cannot grow. And if you cannot grow, you cannot become your best. And if you cannot become your best, you cannot be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? Most people never achieve their goals because most people suffer from possibility blindness. They look, about, they look around trying to think about the things that they don't have. Robert Roots, young man who wrote a book about <laughs> success principles of the three little pigs, he said, it's not what you don't have, it's what you think you need that keeps you from being successful or happy in life. It's not what you don't have. See, I was focused on what I didn't have. Don't have a college degree, don't have any credentials, never worked for a major corporation. I was focused on the negative things. I said, negative things are the things that you see when you're not focused on your goal. What do you come with? What is it? A friend of mine, Dexter Yeager, said, when the dream is big enough, the odds don't matter. I'm reminded of a great man when I was reading Time magazine talking about some of the great minds of the last century. They, they didn't mention his name, Dr. Howard Thurman, one of the mentors of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And, also an advisor to Mahatma Gandhi and, and Albert Schweitzer. And he said, the ideal situation for a man or woman to die is to have family members standing around their bed, praying with them as they cross over. But imagine, if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed, the dreams given to you by life, the ideas that you never acted on, the talents, the gifts, the abilities that you never used. And there they are, standing around your bed, looking at you with large, angry eyes, saying, we came to you, and only you could have given us life, and now we must die with you forever. And the question is, if you died this very moment, what will die with you? What dreams, what ideas, what talent, what leadership potential, what greatness that you showed up to bring, that you allowed fear of procrastination to hold you back. Perhaps that's why Henry David Thoreau wrote the words, Oh God, to reach the point of death, only to realize that you've never lived, only to realize that you've never scraped the surface of your potential. When you don't have a true appreciation in acceptance for who you are, and you allow yourself to be immobilized by fear, what happens in the process is that you begin to abuse yourself. You begin to sabotage your life, you begin to sabotage your dreams, you begin to unconsciously work against yourself. You become your own worst enemy. So what do you do about that? Well, you, you begin to realize that your dream and your gifts have so much meaning and so much value for you till your hunger for them will begin to push you past the fear. Your hunger to have them will give you a special drive. As you work on yourself, as you begin to acknowledge your true identity, the true power that you have, the true capacity you have to bring about change, the miracle working power that you have within yourself to do the things that you want to do. When you take them on, I'm reminded of a man who, this gentleman was doing a special study of a special tribe in Africa, headhunters. And he had difficulty in developing a relationship with these tribesmen because of the fact that he had fear. He had fear they were going to take his head. So he worked there for a long time with no effort, no progress in developing a relationship and rapport and being able to achieve a level of trust. So finally, one night while he was in bed, he was thinking about it. I said, what, what is it that you came here to do? What is your life work as a missionary? He said, I want to study these tribesmen. I said, what's the worst thing that they can do to you? Kill you. And he just decided, hey, this is what I came here to do. I know that there's some risk involved, and I'm going to do it, come what may. He said, I'm not going to be afraid anymore. 
He went back the next day and he started doing the work and trying to talk to and interview many of the members of this tribe. And they began to respond to him. They threw out the welcome mat to him. And years later, when people came to see what his progress was, they asked him, how were you able to do this? How did you convert the relationship from being hostile to that of being positive? And he said something I think has value for all of us. He said, when life can no longer threaten you with death, he said, what else is there? And the majority of the fears that we have are not life or death fears. They're not those kind of fears. But through our imagination, we blow them out of proportion and we give them more power than they actually have or deserve and we permit them to govern our lives. We permit them to determine how far we can stretch out on our dreams and discovering our stuff. And as we begin to look at ourselves and, and begin to wait a minute, just getting to the point as you assess yourself and, and begin to prove yourself and just say, wait, hold a minute, hold a minute. I've been sweating this out. What can, what's the worst thing that can happen to me on this? Will it kill me? Will I die? Why, why am I going through all of these changes over this? How much power does this really have? And am I the one that's feeding the power into it? See, a lot of times we, we allow ourselves to be fed and to be programmed into to being afraid. I mean, you watch the news and read the newspaper, you'll be scared to come out the house. <laughs> am I right? You'll be afraid. So what kinds of things, what kinds of thoughts are you feeding your consciousness? What kind of things are you putting in your mind that will enable you to either move forward or to justify why you are staying where you are. I remember when I ran for state representative in Columbus, Ohio, and I had a lot of people telling me, and you got to watch not only the conversation within, but the conversation without, <laughs> telling me, Les, you can't possibly win. You can't do that. And I went down to the legislature, and I saw myself. I knew what I wanted. I saw myself in the chair. I pointed out the chair that I wanted. I used to go and sit up in the galleries and watch the legislative process. I used to go to the committee meetings and listen to legislation being introduced. I learned how to write legislation, how to amend legislation. I started thinking like a legislator, got up every day dressing, thinking like that, selling myself on it, seeing myself in the legislature. Mr. Speaker, I'm the gentleman from the 29th House District. I'd like to introduce a bill. I went in the legislature, walked around. I had the experience of it. And when I ran and won against overwhelming odds, they were shocked. I won the election even before it was held because I was living it in my mind. You want to see yourself beyond your circumstances. You got a challenge, see yourself beyond your challenge. See yourself with the challenge already resolved. And knowing that all is well, seeing yourself in control and in charge of your destiny, being healthy and happy. The next thing is, it is important in the area of motivating yourself, it's important to know why you're doing it. Because that mind will say, why bother? Why go through all this? This is too hard. No, throw in the tower. It's not worth it. Has it ever said that to you before? Here's how you can handle that. Here's how you override that. Write down five reasons why you deserve it. Why do you deserve what you want? Why you? Why do you deserve it? What meaning and value will it bring to your life? What's so different about you that you deserve your goal or this goal? And when you write down those five reasons, when you have some down moments and you're going to have them, when that conversation starts talking to you and it's going to talk to you, what you will do is you can pull that out and read it and it will build you up. It will be your rod and your staff to comfort you through some challenging moments because you're going to have some. Life will knock you between the eyes. It will catch you on the blind side, come out of nowhere, stuff you can't anticipate. That will knock the wind out of you. You want to give up. That's why it's important for you to work on yourself, listening to tapes, building yourself up, talking to yourself with power, feeling, and conviction, building yourself up day in and day out because it's coming.